Today's video is sponsored by REM. Welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna to get into the financials of the EV. We're gonna talk about specifically my EV, which is a Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus uh, 2018. Now, just a heads up, disclaimer. All the information in this video is gonna be based off of my actuals. So it's stuff like uh, my kilowatt hour price that I pay for electricity here. It's the price of gas that I pay here. And I track all this stuff through the year. So it's not just the current price, but the price at the time that I was spending the kilometers. It's based off of how many kilometers I drive specifically. Um, it's based off of the type of driving that I do, highway versus city, right? So there's a lot of information in here um, that might or may not be applicable to you. But what I'll do is I'll make a copy of this spreadsheet available in the video description. You can save a copy and then you can kind of fiddle around with it and put your information in here. And that might help you decide if it's economical for you to buy an EV. For us, you know, spoiler alert, it's extremely economical. And we'll get into all of that um, as we get going. I'm also going to do a carbon footprint comparison in terms of what we would have spent driving the truck in the car. And this is really important to me specifically. That part might not be as important to you. Number one thing for me was really, and I'll be completely honest, saving money because money at the end of the day is how I trade my life force. And it's like the only currency that I have. I need money to put my kids through school. I need money to, to eat and have a house and, and keep ourselves safe and secure and warm. So to me, worrying not only about how much money you make, which is what most people do, but then how much money you spend is super really duper important. And this is why I do things like this. So let's just get into the spreadsheet here and I'll pop down into the corner and throw my glasses on and we will get into this. So I've got a couple sections here. First off is this is the actual section. So this is each year, this is how many kilometers we drove uh, every single year in the Tesla and basically my birthday's in January. So every time I have a birthday, I would basically just go out and record down the values of um, the vehicles and how many kilometers we have on it. And you know, like I've just, uh, I love numbers, I love tracking stuff. I, I find it useful and fun. So. Uh, that's just, you know, getting a little glimpse into me. Okay, so then this is the uh, the Elantra. So this was a 2014 Hyundai Elantra that we were driving. The truck kilometers are a little bit interesting because the beginning is an earlier truck and we got a new 2018 truck. Um, here, they were both Silverados. So we got a yeah, 2018 there. Um, this here is the older truck. Something else interesting happened. You can see these numbers are a little bit higher. And that's because in 2016, we moved out to our current house where we have the food forest. That's a little further out into the country. And you can see that overall, our kilometers actually went up roughly 15,000 per year because of that. Um, it's not just work that was a longer drive, but um, distance driving to kids hockey was longer, distance driving to, you know, go to uh, buy food or groceries, that kind of thing. Um, and it basically amounts to 15,000 extra kilometers that we drove. But the interesting thing was, is that the, you'll notice that the actuals, these are data mined from our actual credit cards. They actually didn't really change that much over the years. You can see that they're all fairly steady. Now the Elantra, my wife was driving because she drives for work. So she uh, drives around all day for work. So she drives the most fuel efficient car. And then I drive into my job at the office and uh, spend the truck gas. So it's kind of interesting that it didn't change even though maybe the new truck was a little bit bigger and in 2018 we had a little bit of a, a bigger kilometer uh, um, value, but it's mostly because in 2018 gas prices uh, started going up a little bit. So yeah, these are the actual information. I also do an average roll of my truck um, fuel efficiency because I got a little gauge on that. So these are the actuals from each of those years. You can see the new truck was actually more fuel efficient and it's actually even better than what it looks because I was doing a lot of big heavy trailer hauls of compost and horse manure and wood chips that are baked into this average here. So the average might look high compared to what you would think for kind of highway driving for a truck, but considering that I do a lot of hauling in the truck, uh, that's why that average is roughly there. And then, uh, yeah, so these are the average, this is how much money we're spending in gas for the truck. Then this section here is like a theoretical kind of um, ho-ho check, sanity check of the other stuff. And this is where I would look at things like what's the um, ratio of how much we would spend in gas 
compared to how much we would spend in the Tesla. And part of this is actuals and part of this is theoretical numbers from websites. And then I kind of, kind of compare and we'll kind of walk through all that as well. Um, this is, section here is how much CO2 we saved. And then I did it in two ways. This is with my actuals. And then I did it also using a carbon calculator footprint is here. And we'll actually find out that the numbers are, are extremely close. And then we've got the finals, the totals here. And uh, you can see right here that um, this is basically the big number. And this is that every single year that we're driving our EV, we're getting a roughly $3,400 profit. And that is, uh, we'll get into the details of you know what that actually means. It, that actually includes things like the depreciation of the vehicle itself. Um, and that number is only getting better as we actually hold our vehicle and only have to basically do very, very low maintenance on it, like uh, brakes extremely infrequently and um, battery updates every roughly seven years. But recent um, information is showing that some of these batteries are going to last upwards of 20 plus years. So we'll do the seven year um, estimate on when I have to replace the battery in terms of the cost here, but likely the financials are actually going to get you know, quite a bit better in terms of if you want to just buy a Tesla, hold it long term. So let's, before we get into the financials, let's actually talk about the CO2 save, because this is actually one of the reasons why I did this series of videos to help transition the economy off of one that's going to actually stop putting CO2 into the atmosphere so that we can kind of get climate change uh, under control. Now, you know, CO2 isn't everything. And I talk about that in all my videos, especially see the rant at the end of my most recent video, where I really get into the, the concepts of why CO2 matters. Um, and like why a lot of things that uh, people will commonly say the reasons why it doesn't matter are, are technically true, but more importantly, not important. So definitely see that rant if you are a I don't care about CO2 type of person. So this is basically using our total um, over here, our total Tesla kilometers. And the amount of charge that that would require, which is based off of some of these numbers here, and how many megawatts per uh, megawatt hours per year that actually reflects. And that's basically, we're spending 7.19 megawatt hours per year to charge the Tesla. Now, how much CO2 is going to be part of that is going to be whatever your grid blend looks like. And you'll see that the Ontario grid, this is taken from our uh, Ontario government website, where we, Ontario is basically nuclear, hydro, solar, and wind. We have an extremely clean grid. And then this right here is from the EPA. And basically every single megawatt hour in the United States is 818 pounds of CO2 compared to 88 in Canada. So those are the numbers. When you multiply that in by the 719, then you get this many um, tons of CO2 that I'm spending to drive the Tesla per year in Canada and three times or 10 times as much, roughly three tons of CO2 to drive a Tesla 50,000 kilometers in the United States using the United States grid. Now, these numbers here are what the actual CO2 emissions of an ICE vehicle are. And these we actually calculated roughly here using some um, base data on what my actual gas burn up is based off of my kilometers. And the really interesting thing is then we compared it down here, which is using a carbon calculator where you can actually pick the model and you can go play, play with that. But for us, you know, look at these numbers, 13 versus 14.4 and 8.1 versus seven. Those are really, really close. So that gives me a lot of confidence that, um, you know, the numbers that I'm using here in terms of tons of carbon sequestration, they're at least in the right ballpark, right? Anytime we're talking about carbon emissions, it's going to depend on a whole lot of factors. You know, every single Silverado, for example, doesn't emit the same amount of CO2. It's, you know, how well do you maintain it and all that kind of thing. It matters what kind of um, driving are you doing, that sort of thing. Now, the important thing here is that this is just the CO2. It doesn't account for the CO2 equivalent. So that means that these numbers are actually more in favor of the ice cars than reality actually is. And that's really important because these are pretty bad numbers and they're even worse if you actually account for some of the other things like nitrous oxide and methane. Okay, so um, essentially if we instead drove the truck, we would have 13 tons of CO2. And if we instead drove the car, we'd have seven. That compares to my three or 0.3, or if you're in the United States, roughly three. So in the US, we would have saved this much 4.5 tons versus a car. 
And then if we're in the United States and we were replacing a truck with a Tesla Model 3, then we're saving roughly 10 tons of CO2. And that's for 50,000 kilometers. So you can scale that based off of whatever you're driving. For Canada, we're actually saving even a little bit more. So even though we've got a 26 uh, ton carbon footprint for our house, you can see that simply replacing our um, vehicles with an EV, at least replacing the car and then displacing all the car kilometers plus quite a few of the um, truck kilometers, which we'll get into with the EV is actually saving like 13 tons of CO2 per year, every single year. And that is basically half of my household's output is being saved by that one choice. This, this is how fundamentally impactful it can be to drive an EV. Now, one little more caveat on that is that this is only the ongoing daily maintenance and an actual production uh, carbon footprint of an EV is higher than that of a ICE car because there's basically more mining that's required for the batteries and the cars are just generally, you know, per um, kilowatt hour per kilometer driven, they tend to be a little bit heavier. Teslas are pretty heavy and that's a lot of metals that are done. This is one of the things that detractors use when they say not to get an EV because the upfront cost is is very high to actually create the vehicle. But then the thing is, is what you talk about in my misinformation video, that that vehicle then now has like two moving, like the engine has one moving part. The total number of moving parts on a on an EV is in the ballpark of 10, eight to 10, and four of them are wheels. So from an engineering standpoint, this vehicle can last a very, very long time. The economics get even better and better and better, and the CO2 footprint gets even better and better and better because you're not basically replacing the whole entire car like you would with an ICE vehicle where, you know, an engine, a transmission, gearbox, all these things, you know, they last 200,000 kilometers, you know, 300,000 kilometers, maybe 400,000 kilometers. A Tesla can go millions and millions of kilometers before you're actually replacing the whole entire vehicle. So this is really, really important. Okay, so for us, even though we have the Tesla, we want to go further. And because of that, you know, we still have a 26 uh, ton CO2 footprint. And that is with me doing everything I can to minimize how much I'm driving. Because of that, I support REN personally, and REN is the sponsor of this video. And what REN is, is REN is a company that if you are in the same boat as me and you want to support carbon sequestration projects, you want to support ecosystem um, restoration, rehabilitation, and conservation projects, then you can take a carbon footprint calculator test, figure out what your carbon footprint is in a ballpark, and then you know, you know how much you can offset and you can offset however much you want. But for me, it gives me the peace of mind that even though I'm stuck in a lifestyle where I have a large carbon footprint, and even though I'm taking actions to reduce it as much as possible, like driving the EV, which does have a measurable large impact, um, putting solar panels on the house and reducing our electricity, you know, resisting consumerism, all of these things that I do, as well as planting tons and tons of trees. Now I know that I'm at least personally living a carbon neutral or largely carbon negative lifestyle. And I think that that's important. Climate change is not a fair challenge. It impacts impoverished communities more than the people who actually did the damage. And one of the things that I like about supporting REN is that my money can then go and support the people who are actually going to be the ones most infected by climate change. So if that sounds like something that you want to support, check out the link in the video description below and the pinned comment. And the first 100 people will have their first month of membership covered by REN. In terms of the actual economics of the Tesla, we'll get into a little bit more of those details right now. So one of the things that I was a little bit um, upset about because I was really looking forward to making this video series um, when COVID happened, it actually kind of ruined all the numbers. And you can see in 2020 and 2021 here that this is when my work locked down and my wife's as well. And because of that, um, all of our numbers in terms of, you know, our kilometers that we spent went way down. We only had to drive in once in a while for work. My wife had to go in a little more than I had to. And because of that, it actually kind of changed how much money we saved and the results. So you can see these here, two numbers in this uh, final box here. Um, the best way to make money and recoup on an EV purchase is not to buy it and have it sit in the driveway, obviously, right? The, the best way is to have it displacing kilometers of um, previous ICE cars that you were driving. Not to say that it's good to drive and you know, pollute because even 
as we see over here, even driving the Tesla does incur an actual pollution cost into the air. However, buying an EV will be more advantageous for those of us who actually drive more. Okay, so this section here is the theoreticals, and we'll just walk through some of this quick. So I basically took my average distance to work, um, the total average truck gas mileage, which I just used as a ballpark average. This gas price here was an average of all of this data here that I've tracked um, through the through the years. And this is basically just the average for the time because I just need to get a you know an average number. Um, this is basically the total amount that I spend to get to gas. And uh, based off of all of this, this is roughly how much um, dollars I spend per kilometer in this time frame, which was, you know, basically like a six or almost almost 10 year study for the truck to get to work. So there's a lot of there's a lot of um, stuff that's going on here. Some of it's city driving, some of it's highway driving. So it's a very rough number. And then. These are just theoretical um, fuel efficiencies based off of um, specs, like manufacturer specs. So you can see that, you know, 13.4 liters per hundred isn't really that much different than this. Um, it's kind of in the middle of that. And then when you consider that there's some a lot of towing that's going on in there as well, where it'll pop up to like 26 or even 30 um, during the tow. Uh, so you can see that it, it, it the numbers are basically ballpark. And I'm not going to go and convert everything to... to um, you know, uh, imperial units here, but you can do those. Like, I'll actually give you the what, the spreadsheet, and then you can do that yourself if you want. Uh, here's the Elantra. So this is my basically my wife's and her numbers, and basically you get a um, half. It, it you get basically double the fuel efficiency driving the car versus driving the Elantra versus driving the Silverado. So you got 19 cents per kilometer here, and you got 10 cents per kilometer here. And the Tesla number just for um, comparison here is uh where is it here uh there it is dollars so it's basically 1.4 cents 1.4 cents per kilometer so it's substantially better than the elantra these are just using theoretical numbers i actually found that for our situation because of our charging costs were so much higher um in terms of dollars per kilowatt because ontario's got a fairly expensive electricity we're at 10 cents um, 10 cents per kilowatt hour here and that's because um, that's because we don't have the time at use rate because we have the solar panels on our house so I talked about this a little in the other video so we get switched from the time at use over to basically a cap and then a different rate so it's something like eight eight point nine cents or eight point seven cents up to a certain amount and then if you go over that you pay you know ten cents per kilowatt hour because we do so much charging this you know seven megawatt hours a year for the tesla because we do so much charging on the tesla we always hit that gap so i conservatively uh, you know uh, non-conservatively for the tesla case uh, use the 10 cents per kilowatt hour um, charging rate because i want to see what the worst case scenario is so all of these financial numbers they're even better if you can get energy electricity cheaper than 10 cents a kilowatt hour I'm getting a lot of mine off of the solar panels of the house roof. So um, using that wouldn't make any sense for these numbers in terms of it being useful to somebody who's in a city. So basically what these numbers represent is if you live in the city, you can't put solar panels on your house. How much money are you going to save um, driving the Tesla? Okay. So then I have two choices. I can either use that value or I can use theoretical values on the internet that they give based off of um, what the average gas equivalent of driving a Tesla is, and that was 2.1 liters worth of gas in terms of, you know, the energy burned in a, a liter of gas versus the energy required uh, for a motor vehicle to travel a kilometer, and that's 2.1. So basically, now I found that driving the Tesla is much more fuel efficient than this, but we just use this. Again, we're always going to pick the worst numbers for the case of the EV because it's just so good that I want to make sure that we're we're bounding it at the lower end and that anything, the realities are actually going to be a lot better. So that gives you a truck ratio of it's 6.4 times better to drive a Tesla than a Silverado and it's 3.6 times better to drive a Tesla instead of a, a very fuel efficient Hyundai Elantra. And then these are the, my real ratios. So you can see my real ratios are much higher, 13.2 and 5.2. And that's just based off kilometers that we drive and how much money we physically spend at the pumps. So to me, these are the real numbers here that you would want to compare with. And you can see it's twice as good as those numbers there. So to me, the numbers are at least twice as good. 
Other things that are going to factor in here is how long is your winter season? Because in our winter season, we actually have a fairly long winter season, which means the Tesla is driving with um, winter tires. I mean, so is, so are the gas cars, but the Tesla is driving with winter tires and it's going to be running the heater more, which is going to take more charge off the battery. Whereas in a gas car, the heat that is used to heat the cabin of the car is basically waste heat. It's kind of free. So in the Tesla, we got to pay for the heat to keep ourselves comfortable. Um, and that's even with that factored in, it's still roughly 13 times better to drive the Tesla than a truck and five times better to drive the Tesla than a fuel efficient car. And that is, um, you know, fantastic savings. Okay. So now we'll pop over here and I'll just move my, so now we'll pop over here and look at these numbers. These are the total. So this is, you know, the big numbers that you came for. So in 2018, we didn't drive a whole lot because we got it roughly towards the end of 2018, I think roughly around October. And even just in that time, we saved $416. And in 2019, we deflected 19,290 kilometers off of the truck and 33,175 kilometers off of the Tesla or off of the Elantra. And the, the way that I got this was basically estimating um, where the gas was spent. So for example, if I'm uh, buying gas really, really far away, that was either hockey or it was a road, like a long road trip. I was hauling a camper, that kind of thing. Those costs in the past were all paid by the truck. And it's because the Hyundai Elantra couldn't really get our hockey gear in our hockey gear, plus all of the kids that we would be bringing um, in order to take our kids to the hockey tournaments, for example. And sometimes you're taking other people's kids. However, the Tesla, we can actually get like two or three pieces uh, sets of gear for hockey in them. They're very, very spacious. And this is just the Model 3. And then you can get all the people in there. So we actually took the Tesla Model 3 to almost all the hockey tournaments this year. Um, the only ones that we didn't were areas where at the hockey tournament, there's a lot of driving between arenas and there's no charger in that location at all. Um, and you can see that actually over the years that uh, the 6,300 savings per year in 2019 and then compared to 2022 the $7,000 a year savings a lot of this is because we were able to take the Tesla in more places in Ontario because the charging infrastructure got better there was new chargers that were put up hotels that we would stay at had um, EV receptacles that we could charge at that kind of thing so based off of our savings rate, we were saving roughly between 6,300 and 7,100. I think the 7,100 number is more accurate in terms of, you know, today, how much we're driving today, what the fuel prices are of today. And, you know, that's obviously a really important thing too. They're only going to get worse. Electricity prices will probably rise as well, but I'm pretty confident to say that fuel prices will rise faster than electricity prices will rise. However, if that's not the case and you're watching this three years from now, then you know you might be able to adjust this $7,000 number up or down, depending on how those things scaled with respect to each other, electricity cost or uh, fuel cost. So this is the total that we've saved. And um, this is the black book value of our Tesla right now. So they've actually held on to their value really, really well. Now, part of this, I was kind of following this for a while because there's been a bit of an oddness going on in the car manufacturing market where it'd be really hard to buy uh, used vehicles because it's harder to buy new vehicles. So other people are buying used vehicles and often the price of a used vehicle actually kind of went up in a little while. I wanted to flatten that out and not capture that temporary effect. And because of that, I've kind of flattened out the numbers in terms of an average of what I've been seeing over the last while. Now, I'm not sure um, how this is going to play out into the future. How are people going to value, for example, a 12 year old Tesla that is still on its original battery? I'm not sure how fastly that will fall off and that could potentially impact the numbers. However, saving $7,000 a year, you know, every year that you can get out of your vehicle, you're actually making $7,000. So this number here, if there's no COVID, was me taking the average of this value and this, I could kind of just show you this, if no COVID here, taking the average of um, this value and this value, which is the years excluding the ones where uh, the economy locked down, and then taking the average of that and then multiplying that by the amount of years that we've had the Tesla. 
So this is basically saying if COVID didn't happen and everything worked out the way that it is in, you know, our standard baseline life of going to work and driving into the office, then this is how much we'd be saving. Now, an interesting thing in this number two is we're actually would be saving more if I was going into the office five days a week. We're actually going into the office three days a week now um, because of a collective bargaining agreement that my specific work was able to negotiate. So I actually can actually work from home for 40% of my work hours. So if someone's driving to the office, you know, we'd be sa we'd be saving even more. And it's basically entirely related to fuel prices, which, you know, if we go down here and see some of these fuel prices of the last while, these numbers here are just date numbers, but the f fuel prices of the last while have obviously gone up quite a bit, upwards of, you know, 50 to 70% higher over the last five years or so. So if you know, if that keeps continuing, this number is going to get even higher. If you're driving more for work, that number is going to be even more attractive to you. But in general, for us, we're saving even after depreciation. So I'll just go over this actually. So this is the total that we saved. If there was no COVID, we would have saved 35,000 using just the kind of average numbers and then the black book value of our car. So basically we spent $57,282. And then after five and a half years, we have an asset that I can sell right now for $39,000. And then we saved, we would have saved $35,000 in gas. We did save 16, but if, you know, that's with two full years of COVID lockdown. On average, if you're doing 7,000 a year that, that you're gonna be saving if you're driving 50,000 like us, then you'll save that much. And you can change all the numbers for whatever you're driving. And then these will all update as well. So you can use a spreadsheet like that. So over the course of owning our Tesla, we basically saved $17,000 total for a yearly average profit of $34,000 or $3,400, which basically represents like a side gig income of $3,400 coming in. So in terms of a financial investment, we put out $57,000. And right now, as of today, snapshot, we basically saved $3,400 every single year. And that number gets better and better and better because the longer we hold the Tesla, the longer the battery lasts, um, the, the less that this number here, the purchase cost matters. Because if after 15 years, we spend $14,000 on a battery and that battery can last us another 15 years, the economics get you know infinitely better. This might go even as high as like 13 or $14,000 per year that you're saving. So overall, I'm extremely happy with my Tesla Model 3. It is an expensive car to get into, um, which we talk about in, a, in the previous video on some of the softer aspects, but it is um, very, very financially beneficial. And you know, to me as well, very, very carbon and pollution, air pollution and climate change um, uh, beneficial in terms of those aspects as well. Uh, have any questions hit me up below make sure you if you're interested at all in the EV you know grab the spreadsheet copy it over start playing around with it so thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this video I put a lot of work into this one uh, there's a lot of data here so if you found any value in this or any of my other videos consider supporting us directly on patreon there's a link below as well as uh, the joining up in the YouTube membership program I don't usually say that kind of stuff a lot because I find it's kind of annoying when people do that. But if I don't, and people don't know about it. So if you're interested, then it helps out a ton. So see you on the next one and uh, happy gardening, everybody.